Oh, now it's filming. Hi. So this is gonna be fun today. We're gonna to explore just a single light. I'm using the HVL60. I'm using this Scoopy thing by Magmod. I used this years and years and years ago. It wasn't a fan because I didn't give it a chance, I think. Now, here's the thing. I have pro photos like this and it's a cloth thing and it pops open and it's you know, probably $10,000. But this thing is the same shape as that. And I never liked that. Every time I used it, I just didn't like the light pattern. I couldn't set it up right. So I'm gonna try this today and see what I can do. So we'll start with this. We're gonna use this even straight on camera, you know, with and without the dome. We're gonna play with it and see what we can get. The last thing we're gonna do is pull out my giant umbrella. <laughs> I love this thing. This is the lasso light um, collapsible. I don't even know if they make these anymore, but if they do, they're really nice to have because they're this tiny. The shaft is pretty thick on this, so it doesn't fit in some of the holes uh, that they have for umbrellas, but it does fit on the Magmods uh, mag shoe hole. It's no problem with that. But when you see this opened up, you're gonna be kind of surprised. Um, and this is how compact it is. I literally carry this in my pocket sometimes uh, just to have it, and I love it. Anyway, let's get to the shoot. If you have any questions, leave them below. Hopefully I can you know, guide you with light placement and model placement, again, with a single light. Uh, and sometimes you have to embrace what you have and enjoy the photos rather than looking for all the details that you think are wrong. Anyway, if you have any questions, leave them below. Thanks for watching as always. The first thing I wanna say is this mag bounce responds quite a bit differently than pro photos and like right here, you can see the shadow there. The light's a little bit closer to me. You know, she's a little bit of a distance from the background, maybe two and a half feet. But if I change my angle just a little bit, I can drop that even lower. So you can see it down to the bottom right corner there. It's not bad, but it's still there. But it wouldn't phase me one bit. I'm not going to look at a photo like that of her or anybody else and go, oh, I would have loved this if that shadow wasn't there. But moving that all the way over to the right now, this is a great spot for it. It's going to drop the shadow far to the right of the image, so it's going to be out of the image. But you just have to remember to turn her head a little bit towards that uh, light because it's coming from that side. Now, if she's turned the other way or her hair is going to like fall just a little bit into her face, it's going to cast shadows. So that's the only downside of using a small modifier is you have to make those small tweaks, even with hair or something like that. Now, you know, I notice a lot of the times her hair on, you know, her, that side of her face is the side that's back. So putting the flash on that side helps quite a bit. Now, the other thing is, you know, I just tilted that head down just a little bit on the flash to see if I can get full length. And it did full length without issue. You know, I had head to toe even light with this little modifier. Um, so honestly, I really am impressed with this. And I don't know what it was the first time I used it, um, why I didn't like it, <clears throat> or if I just related it to the pro photo one, because the pro photo one is like a firm, uh, scoop kind of thing. And it has a, you know, a harder top on it. Um, and maybe that just doesn't produce the light that this thing does. Um, but this really did produce nice, nice light for the size of it. Um, you know, granted it is still a harder light, and you still have to take your time and, and make those fine, you know, fine adjustments with it. Otherwise you're going to get the shadows and, or, you know, the unpleasant light that you, you, you wouldn't want. Now going directly in front of her, you know, I always do this with every modifier I use to get that beauty kind of lighting, uh, to see what I can do with it. And, and this did a pretty darn good job. I mean, considering this is one speed light and this little modifier, I'm really pleased with the output that it's given me. Now I'm going to take this off the stand and I'm going to go straight on camera flash now. Because I know everybody like says, oh, it's, you know, horrible. And, and I go over this quite a bit, you know, whether it's that little, little flash that I use directly on the camera or a flash like this, I like the look of it. Now you can see I'm a distance from the backdrop. Um, and you know, I do have a little bit of mixed lighting here because the window open. Um, and I'm running this on TTL, but I'm at ISO 64 for all these shots, which is, you know, kind of impressive. But I, you know, like when I get closer, you can see the backdrop dropping off a little bit. But when I move her closer to the backdrop, you like, oh, I have to worry about shadows and so forth. But 
you see an image like this, you're not going to look at it and go, oh, there's shadows there. It's just not going to happen. Now, here's the thing. With this flash, this is that HVL F60. It has that tilt up thing where you can actually tilt the flash up to the side. And it does put it a little bit above the lens uh, center. You know, with a regular flash, if it doesn't have that tilt up, you're, you're at center. Now, here I'm going to put that bounce card up. You know, I've said this many times. Like, I'll put that bounce card up and put that diffuser over it so it pushes more light forward. Now, me, there's a black ceiling in this. It's not helping bounce light, but it's raising the flash up a little bit higher than, than it is, you know, on a straight axis. Uh, I like the look. Um, it feathers the light kind of a little bit more on the face. So I can go close up or far away and it works. Um, but try that. Just pull that bounce card up and then, you know, put the diffuser back on and just tilt up a little bit. Now, this is, this is all direct flash at a distance. Again, I'm shooting in TTL with this, ISO 64. Um, it, it works. I don't need, you know, high-speed sync. It just, you know, we're in studio. I mean, outdoors, obviously, you know, if you wanted to shoot wide open, you'd go into the high-speed sync, but this is working just fine for me. Now, this is that little umbrella. I, you know, I'm hoping this is still available because it is a cool umbrella. It is a really tight fit in that little bag, by the way. That's why it's... Um, but yeah, look at how big this thing gets. This is a nice little setup. Um, you know, you can use this in bounce or a shoot-through. I always use these type umbrellas, the translucent in, in shoot-through mode. I just like to look better. Uh, the bounce, it just doesn't do anything for me. Um, but the shoot-through, it works really well. And that's a really good coverage. You know, think about that. That umbrella fits in your pocket. You're using one speed light. And this is a really nice flash setup. Um, you know, and I, I don't remember what the last light cost at the time, um, but I'm going to look for it. If, it. if they still have it, I'll throw a link in the description, but I, I don't, I don't know if they do. Um, but I definitely will look and, and see who, who carries it, if it's B&H or uh, Amazon or whatever. Um, but the coverage you get with this kind of setup, I mean, you know, a simple speed light, a, a, a collapsible umbrella, and you can take this anywhere, you know, obviously outdoor, you know, umbrellas are just complete sales for outdoors. Uh, but you know, indoors or a, a low wind day, <laughs> how's that? Um, it's going to work just fine. Uh, but I do love the look from it and I love the coverage that it's giving. Now, honestly, you know, this is that soft light that you're looking for and I don't have to worry about which way she moves or her hair flying or something like that. It, it's going to cover no matter what, um, you know, so I do love using, you know, a little bit larger a reflector when, when you have a model that moves or has, you know, the hair like this, or, or you need that more full coverage. Now lights coming from both sides, cause I am getting some bounce off that translucent, uh, scrim on that bright side. And so I'm going to throw up the black, um, you know, to absorb that light on, you know, on that side, um, just to add a little bit more depth to the image. You know, it's not going to be a great a huge, um, difference because that it is, you know, that size umbrella is definitely giving me some wraparound light, but it will take some of that away. Um, and, and give me more of that moody look that I'm looking for. Um, and a richer, richer look, if you will. Uh, and it does, you know, like when you're using a, a black side like that with a light on the other side, uh, it does give you that a little bit more depth and richness. You just have to watch you know, obviously that you're using a wraparound light unless you want that extreme dark side on the, on the one side. Anyway, this was a great shoot, a fun shoot. I hope you learned something. Um, and if you have any questions, leave them below. Thanks for watching as always.